This lesson is for fourth grade. This is lesson one in chapter eight over the solar system. Today's lesson is talking about Earth and the sun. And we're going to talk about topics such as apparent motion, rotation, revolution, which you can see are your vocabulary words here. We're going to talk about what causes day and night. We're going to talk about seasons. And we're going to talk a little bit about how the what the weather's like at the poles and different places on Earth. We're also going to talk just a little bit about shadows. So again, this is Chapter 8, Lesson 1, Earth and Sun. Let's get to it. Have you ever thought, why is it daytime here and it's nighttime, say, in Australia? Well, that's because Earth moves. Earth's moving all the time. And for a long time, people thought that Earth stood still and the sun rotated around that, around the Earth. But we found out something different. We found that the Earth rotates and revolves around the sun. So not only is Earth moving around the sun, it's also spinning. Rotation is the act of spinning. Spinning like so. As you can tell, it spins around and around and around. That spinning causes day and night. Now, the dotted line down the middle of the Earth is an imaginary line. You don't really see it. It's not there. But it does help um, tell us where the North Pole and South Pole is. This imaginary line is called the axis. It's what we say that the Earth is spinning on. One rotation takes 24 hours to complete. 24 hours equals one day. Within each hour, we divide it into 60 minutes. Every minute takes 60 seconds. So again, one rotation, 24 hours or one day. So rotation causes a day and night, but it causes a lot of other things too. It causes something called apparent motion. Apparent motion is the way something appears or seems to move. It's the reason it looks like the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. It's not really moving around or going up and down in the east and the west. The sun stays put, as we all know. But because Earth is rotating, it appears to do that. Has anybody ever ridden in their car and it looks like the clouds are following them? That there is also apparent motion. It looks like it's happening, but that's only because Earth is rotating. So anytime it looks like something's moving with you, that probably isn't moving like the clouds or the moon or the sun, apparent motion. Now, shadows. We can talk about shadows. Um, shadows are different lengths at different times of the day. Um, and this is all based on rotation as well because sunlight shines differently on the earth at different times depending on where we're rotating. Um, early in the morning your shadow is really long and then it gets shorter and shorter until midday which is noon so it's right above you and you really wouldn't have much of a shadow at all. You're going to have the shortest shadow at about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And then it's going to get longer and longer until the sun sets and goes down. So from about 6 to 12, you have a long shadow. At 12 o'clock, you have a short shadow. And then it grows longer and longer until 6 p.m. or so, whenever sunset is. And then you have a short shadow again. And just in case you didn't know, shadows form when light's blocked. It's the absence of light. Light strikes the object and it can't pass through. That's a shadow. And also keep in mind that the sun's not always at its highest point in the sky at noon. So again, what causes day and night? Rotation. The act of spinning causes day and night. So we're not only rotating and spinning, but we're also revolving. Revolution is when one object travels around another. Uh, the path that a revolving object takes is its orbit. So as you can see here, Earth is revolving around the sun. It's going around and around. The arrows indicate the path that it's taking. 
that's the orbit. So the actual act of going around is revolution. The path or shape that it takes is its orbit. So it could go like this, and that's its orbit. It's still going around, so it's still revolving. But the train tracks, think of it as train tracks telling it where to go. That's the orbit. The shape of Earth's orbit is called an ellipse. An ellipse is a flattened circle, kind of like an oval. One revolution takes about 365 and one-fourth days. That's one year. So we learned a second ago, 24 hours is one rotation. That's day and night. One day is one rotation. One revolution takes 365 days and a fourth days. Well, how do you get one-fourth of a day? You can't do one-fourth of a day. Using some math here, I know that four-fourths, so four of these, will get me one day. Well, what happens every four years? Something called a leap year. So every February the 29th, you're going to make up this fourth day, and that's how our revolutions stay on track. Earth, as you notice here, we talked about the axis, the imaginary line. It's not straight up and down like this, but it's kind of at a tilted angle. That angle is 23 and a half degrees. The tilt points in the same direction throughout Earth's orbit. So as it goes around, sorry, as it goes around, it's going to stay in this angle like so the whole time. So this tilt causes sunlight to strike at different angles, and at any given time, each hemisphere, notice it goes around half, you have a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. Hemispheres are halves, half of a sphere, this is a sphere, a hemi means half, gets more or less sunlight. And because of this, the tilt and revolution, remember, tilt plus revolution equals the seasons, summer, fall, winter, and spring are all because of revolution and tilt. The 23 and a half degree angle. The four seasons, uh, again, summer, fall, winter, spring. In June, the North Pole is going to tilt toward the sun, as you can see here. And sunlight hits the northern hemisphere at steeper angles. As you can tell, it's a little bit closer, you're getting a steep angle. That's going to cause summer. The light's more intense. Now, in December... You go around. The North Pole tilts away from the sun, and it's at a lower angle, so it's not as intense. So those parts of the world are getting uh, winter. However, if you notice, it's summer here, but at the same time on the other side, you're going to be having winter because you're not getting the light as direct. So when it's Summer somewhere, the other hemisphere is having winter. If it's spring in one hemisphere, it's fall in the other. Oh, it's always opposites. Okay, again, remember, revolutions when one object travels around the other. The path that it takes is its orbit. One revolution is 365 days. The shape is an ellipse. And what causes the seasons? Revolution plus the 23 and a half degree angle tilt. And also, when it's summer somewhere... In one hemisphere, it's winter in the other. So how does the sun's apparent path change over the season? Well, this diagram is showing us how it changes during the day. And each yellow circle is representing the sun as where it is at 12 o'clock noon. And so how does that change with the seasons from winter, spring, fall, and summer? Well, the sun rises much higher in the sky during a summer day. It also rises earlier and it sets later so the days are longer it's much lower during a winter day so it rises later and sets earlier so that makes the days seem shorter the days are still 24 hours but you're not getting as much sunlight that explains the temperatures and why the days seem so long you're getting equal amounts of day and night 
during spring and fall. So this diagram doesn't apply to all parts of the world, though. When you get near the equator, which is the middle of Earth, I guess you could say it's close to the Florida and that area, closer to the equator, the seasons don't change that much, and the sun's apparent path changes very little. All year long, it's getting similar angles all the time. So that's why if you go to Florida, it's pretty warm all the time. Near the poles at the North Pole and the South Pole, really different between the seasons. Like, for example, in Alaska, summer nights are really short. During the winter, the sun hardly ever appears, so that explains the extreme temperatures and, and the cold there. So how can you make predictions? Well, the sun's apparent path stays in this pattern all the time, every year. So scientists are going to use these patterns to predict exactly when you're going to have sunrise, and sunset because of the consistent um, path changes you can always know when's it going to rise and when's it going to set and what kind of temperatures are we going to possibly have okay so we talked about rotation and revolution in this lesson over um, earth and sun if you have any questions feel free to ask me or message me on edmodo